Howdy, it's Kyle with the unveiling of the pin map that viewers have been participating in. About a month ago, I posted a video where I made an announcement how if you want to support the channel, you can purchase a pin for $5 and I'll place it on a map in the spot where you could live if you could live anywhere you want in the world. And I got many responses and in this video, I'm going to go over the pins on the map and some of the research associated with it. If you'd like to participate in the pin map, I'll put a link in the description where you can go to my PayPal page and purchase a pin. And I'll also pin a comment, no pun intended, at the top of the comment section where I go over some of the details and some of the things that I want to be able to put on this map. So just take a look at this map and see where y'all want to live. So here's the official map for the US and I'll show the world map in a little bit. One of the first things you might notice is just how many pins there are in the West. Only about 25% of the U.S. population lives in the western half of the country, but about half of the pins are in the west. And for Canada, more than half of the pins are in British Columbia alone. Now I'm going to show the spreadsheet data, and after that I'll show zoomed in portions of the map to get more detail. Every respondent fit into one of these five categories. Categories A and B are people that live where they are from. Categories C, D, and E are people that live somewhere where they're not from. By far, the most popular categories are B and E, which are people that don't want to live where they currently live. And you look at the two lowest categories, A and C, these are people that want to live in their hometown. One thing that is important to note is that I don't think the viewers of this channel are the best possible sample. I mean, I love you guys, but I think people that are interested in this channel and these topics might be more interested in moving somewhere else, maybe exploring a little bit more. If you were to ask random people off the street the same question, I think you would probably get more A's and C's. I think you would still probably get more B's and E's, but there would be more A's and C's. This is a list of the most desired places to live and where I put the most pins. Any place that has at least three respondents got on this list. And this list echoes the map and it shows a disproportionate number of people that want to live in the West. And you look at this list, the smaller towns on here are also in the West. Places like Jackson, Wyoming, or Santa Fe, New Mexico, Astoria, Oregon. But also another trend you see here is people wanted to move to places that are scenic. A lot of beautiful mountain, lakes, and coastline are represented here. This one just shows the most desired largest metro areas. The numbers here might not match the numbers shown for the individual cities in the previous list. So for example, New York City had eight responses, however there was one for West New York, New Jersey, so the overall New York metro area has nine. There doesn't appear to be any correlation whatsoever between the size of the metro and the number of folks that want to move there. And six of the top seven are Western metros. And here's a list of just the states and provinces and the number of responses for each one. And just like the largest metros, there's no correlation between the population of the largest states and provinces and the number of people that want to live there. One thing that's also very interesting is that Mississippi and West Virginia are the only two states in the country that have zero responses, and they're also the two poorest states in the country. That might be a coincidence, but it is interesting. So now let's look at the map zoomed in for greater detail. I'm going to start off with the northwestern U.S. and British Columbia, and then move east from there. So you can immediately see Seattle, that big cluster of pins right there along the Puget Sound. Seattle was the most popular big city that people wanted to live in. And you can see a lot of other pins in western Washington. Because the map is hand drawn, it can be hard to see exact details, but there are a few pins that are actually on islands in the Puget Sound. You look just north of that into British Columbia, that island to the west of Seattle area is Vancouver Island. That's not where Vancouver is, it's where Victoria is. Vancouver is that cluster of five pins just north of the Washington border. And then you go down to Oregon, another really popular state for this map. You get a big cluster right there around Portland and five on the coastal town of Astoria. Unfortunately, of all the states on the map, I kind of screwed up placing some of the pins on Oregon. So you'll see some scuff marks of ones where I had to pull them out. They weren't in the right spot. Um, other parts of the map, like you can see in southwestern Montana and stuff, there are little scuff marks on the on the map itself, but the ones in Oregon are largely holes that I had to pull the pin out because I didn't put it in the right spot. It's not very noticeable when you look at the map on the wall, but it shows up pretty obvious in photos. And then you look at Idaho, not a whole lot of pins for the state as a whole, but about half of them are just in the Coeur d'Alene area in the Panhandle. Next to that is Montana, which is a big state and only half of it is shown on this map, but all of the pins for Montana are in the western half of the state. And you look in the southeastern portion of this map in that big cluster in northwestern Wyoming, that's Jackson. The town of Jackson and the area is referred to as Jackson Hole is 
by far the most popular small town in the entire map. You may also notice a few white pins. I don't use the white ones because they, they're really hard to see, but the ones that are white on the map are ones where people didn't really know where they wanted to move and they said, hey, put me somewhere in Idaho or Montana, or I had two to say, just put me somewhere on the Pacific Northwest coast. So if you see a white pin, that's not a specific spot, it's just someone said that general area. And here's the Great Plains. These states are often referred to as the flyover states. Generally speaking, not the most beautiful scenery, and it's mostly pretty rural. And as a result, not a lot of people have chosen a spot in one of these states, except for Minnesota that I'll discuss when I talk about the Great Lakes region. So this is the Midwest of the U.S. and Southern Ontario, Canada. On the national map, it's really hard to see the pins in Michigan because they're almost all along the coast. And with the lines being black, it can be hard to see some of the pins. But zooming in, you can see just how many are in Michigan. Most of the responses for Michigan are from people that are from a city in Michigan that want to move to a smaller town along one of the lakes. And just west of that is Wisconsin. That cluster of three in south central Wisconsin is Madison. To the west of that is Minnesota. That big cluster in the southeastern portion of the state is the Twin Cities. And north-northeast of that is a cluster of three, and that's Duluth. You had a few for Iowa, a few for the Chicago metro area, Indianapolis, Bloomington, a few in Ohio. I was surprised to see only three from Ontario and only one for Toronto. And one for the beautiful Bruce Peninsula, which juts out on the Lake Huron. Here we have the northeastern U.S. and portions of Ontario and Quebec. The first thing you might notice is just the cluster of pins in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is the state where the largest percentage of the people that live there want to continue to live there. Not a lot of folks from Massachusetts want to move to another state. Compare that to Connecticut that only has one response. Maine has quite a few with that cluster of five in the south being Portland, and one for down east Maine, which is a term I used incorrectly in my video about Maine. There are more in Vermont than New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Rhode Island combined. You look into New York State and you see quite a few clustered around the New York City metro area. You get a couple in the Catskills and a couple in the Adirondacks. The cluster of three just north of New York State is Montreal. And you look at Pennsylvania in the southwestern corner of this map and I was surprised to see only four responses, one each for Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. And you've got a couple each in Delaware and Maryland and a few in the DC Northern Virginia area. And so now here we are taking a look at the south. That big cluster of pins you see right in the middle of the map is western North Carolina. The four is Asheville. The other three are in the mountainous portions of North Carolina. Just west of that is Tennessee. You got four in the Nashville metro area and two where I live in Chattanooga. I was quite surprised to see only two for the coast of South Carolina and only one for the coast of Georgia. You take away North Carolina and there really aren't that many pins in the entire south, surprisingly. Not going to lie, I'm a little disappointed with the turnout from the South, not so much where the pins are located, but just the number of respondents from the South. It's the part of the country where I received the fewest number of responses relative to its overall population. And here we have Florida, which is the most popular state for the Eastern U.S. I was a little surprised to see the biggest cluster for Florida to be in the Tampa Bay area. You got three in Tampa and only one in Miami. The two in the northeastern portion of the state are for Amelia Island. And then you got one in Key West. So here's Texas and the south central part of the U.S. Surprisingly, not that many responses for Texas relative to its size. And Houston is the largest metro area in the country that had zero responses. And most of the ones for Texas are clustered in that central part of the state. There's one for San Antonio, two for Austin, and one for New Braunfels, which is between the two. And there are also two for Fredericksburg, which is a small town equidistant to both San Antonio and Austin. You had a couple along the coast, Corpus Christi and South Padre Island. Those two in West Texas are out in the middle of nowhere in a small town called Marathon. Really cool town, but I'm surprised to see two responses for there. It's also interesting to note that most of the respondents who currently live in Texas want to move out of Texas. You got one there for Norman, Oklahoma, which is a response from a guy who's a meteorologist who wants to work for the National Severe Storms Laboratory there. That's a great answer. There are three for northwestern Arkansas, two for Fayetteville, which you can see on this map, and there's also one for Bentonville, just north of that, but I didn't get it into this photo. And you have two in east Louisiana with the southern one, the red one, being New Orleans. Okay, and here's the four corner states. 30 responses for Colorado with that big cluster of 12 is Denver and Boulder. Most of the other ones are small towns in the mountains or ski resort towns. No shortage of great places to live in Colorado, and a lot of folks obviously want to live there. 
Just south of that is New Mexico. You see a big cluster for Santa Fe, another one for Albuquerque. And one of those Santa Fe ones is mine. To the west of that is Arizona. The northernmost ones are Flagstaff and around Grand Canyon National Park. And then there's a couple for Sedona just south of that, a couple for Prescott just south of that. And it can be a little hard to see, but at the bottom of the map you'll see a red pin that represents Puerto Penasco, Mexico, which is a coastal town at the northern end of the Gulf of California. Then you look up into Utah, the Great Salt Lake is drawn kind of strange, but that cluster of five is Salt Lake City. In the southwestern corner of the state, you have an area along the I-15 corridor, pretty near Zion National Park. And you got one random one in eastern Nevada for near Great Basin National Park. And here's California and Nevada. You look at that big old cluster down there in the south, that's San Diego. And just look how many more there are for San Diego than Los Angeles, even though it's significantly smaller. Another thing interesting about that is that most of the people from Los Angeles wanted to move to a different state. Most of the other folks in California that wanted to move to a different place wanted to move to a different part of California. Those two off the coast of Southern California are on the island of Catalina. And you have a bunch along the central coast there, San Luis Obispo County, Big Sur, Monterey, Carmel. And that cluster along the coast and the bays is the San Francisco Bay Area. Over in Nevada, you look at that cluster of three in the north, that's Reno, and that cluster of three in the south is Las Vegas. Okay, so here's a zoom in of Hawaii. With it being hand-drawn, the islands look kind of strange, but the one to the west with the five pins is Oahu. And those three pins clustered together at the south end of the island is Honolulu. The island with three pins in the middle is Maui, and the island with four pins in the southeast is the Big Island, or Hawaii. This is Alaska here, and there are only three for the entire state, one each for Anchorage, Juneau, and Seward. So now I want to show the world map, and I know that a lot of folks that aren't from the U.S. or Canada were a little upset that I only had a map of the world small like this and a huge map of the U.S., but with 95 or 100 of the viewers of this channel being from the U.S. or Canada, I knew that most of the responses were going to be there. So I didn't think there would be that many worldwide. And this is the map of the pins for people that chose to live in other countries besides the U.S. or Canada. Or that one random one in northern Canada that didn't fit on the other map. I'm going to zoom in to Europe here. The blue one in the far northwest is in Iceland. The blue and yellow one in the north central part of the map is Norway. And both of the responses were just put me somewhere in Norway. The yellow and blue ones south of that are the Netherlands. One of those specifically Amsterdam, the other one just somewhere in the Netherlands. And then one each for Portugal, Spain, Germany, and Latvia, and two for Italy. The one in the southeastern portion of this map is northern Israel, and not a single response for the UK. Several people from the UK responded, but none of them wanted to actually stay there. Just a few for Latin America here. The red one in the northwest is Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. The blue one just east-southeast of that is Mexico City. The black one in the south-central part of the map is my dad's pin for a coastal town in Ecuador. And that blue one in the east end of the map was someone that responded, I want to live on a boat just somewhere in the Caribbean. Only two responses for Africa here. The black one in the southwest is Cape Town, South Africa. And the blue one in the middle is Rwanda. It was really cool to see a response for Rwanda, too. I like that. And the last one I'm going to show here, you see one blue pin for India there. There are two in Thailand in the middle of the map. Uh, the black one was just general Thailand, and the green one was a coastal town in the south. The green and blue ones in the north central portion of the map are Taiwan, and only one for Australia, for the central highlands of Victoria. So overall, I'm just so pleased with the turnout and the response. I'm really happy to be looking at this map and examining some of the data associated with it. It's a big, beautiful world, and there are all kinds of wonderful places in which to live. I've been so fascinated with the data associated with this, and I was worried it might end up looking a little bit like a population density map. So if the pins were just where you currently live, and it would certainly end up just like a density map, but this certainly ended up not looking like that at all. So it's just really cool to see the wide variety of preferences that people have and which, you know, the places they'd like to live. And so I just really look forward to seeing more pins on this map and just adding more stuff to the spreadsheet and just adding more because the larger the sample size is, the better the overall data will be. 
Thank you guys for supporting the channel by purchasing a pin. And if you'd like to do the same thing, check out the link in the description and read the top comment in the comment section for more information. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about US geography. I'm talking about cities and counties and states and all kinds of different categories, cross country road tripping and everything. It's just kind of a nerdy type perspective on geography. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.